This is the Chapter 5, Section 4, Skill 2, Example 3 from your notes. And in this problem we are given a graph of the velocity curve and we are told when its horizontal tangents are and what the accumulation is going to be for each of these sections. And the question is, we want to find the time and the position of the particle when the particle is furthest to the left. And then we also want to figure out for how many values of t the particle has a position of negative 8. So if we read this, it says at time t equals 0, the particle is at x equals negative 2. So here we have a picture of the derivative, which is v. And we are told that if I plug in 0, I get a negative 2. And we're on the closed interval from 0 to 6. So I'm going to cover up all of this text so that we can see what I'm doing here. And our goal is to find the furthest to the left. So for part A, in order to get full points for our justifications, we would need to indicate that we know that furthest left is the same as a minimum position. And then we can write that x of t will have a min at an end point or when x prime, which is the same as v, equals 0 or undefined. So we've got some justification points already, even though we haven't answered the question. So my candidates are going to be the endpoints, which are 0 and 6. And then we also have the places where this velocity function that we have pictured is equal to 0. So we can see it happens at 3 and again at 5. Now in order to test which of these is the smallest or which of these generates a position that is furthest to the left, we need to be able to list the outputs that belong with these inputs. And we can't do that until we actually have a function. Well, the beauty of the fundamental theorem of calculus is that we have a point and we have a derivative. So we can write the function for the position at any time as the position we start with plus the accumulation from when we started up to t on its velocity function. So I can now test what 0 would generate, what 3 would generate, what 5 would generate, and what 6 would generate. If I plug each of those into the function, I'll have a negative 2 plus the accumulation from 0 up to the x-coordinate on the velocity curve. And this is why they gave us those accumulations on the picture, because we don't have a formula for v, we would not be able to do it analytically. So if we look here, accumulation from 0 to 0, well, that's nothing. So we just get a negative 2. Here, I would have a negative 2 plus the accumulation from 0 to 3. Well, that accumulation is a negative 8, because the area that is underneath the t-axis is an 8. So I'd have a negative 2 plus a negative 8 will give me a negative 10. Next, if we want to continue on to 5, we'd have negative 2 minus 8 plus a 3. So in that case, we're going to end up with a negative 7. Finally, with 6, we would have a negative 2 minus 8 plus 3 minus 2. So we'll end up at negative 8, or excuse me, negative 9. So looking at this list, we can see that the minimum occurs at time equals 3 and the minimum position is negative 10. So we could write that down. x is furthest left when x t equals 3. And we need to say what that position is. It's negative 10. OK, so if part b, the reason I left this space here, for part b, we want to know how many times x is going to equal negative 8. So first, let's start by graphing the points that we know on x. We've got the point. I'm actually going to move this up here. 0, negative 2. We've got 3, negative 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
we've got 5, negative 7, and then we have 6, negative 9. So at first glance, we could say that if I connect these values, these points, I would cross that line x equals negative 8 1, 2, 3 times. And we can see that from the intermediate value theorem, because we had y coordinates flanking that negative 8 three different times, we've got to have at least three locations where x is going to hit that negative 8. Now the problem is, is that we don't know whether or not we did something like this because we could have hit that 8 a bunch of times. So what is it about V that tells us that it happens only three times? Because that's the correct answer. We can say that X of T equals negative 8 exactly three times by the IVT applied to the three different intervals. We've got one on 0 to 3, another one from 3 to 5, and then a final one from 5 to 6. The reason we know that it only happens three times is that on my path from 0 to 3, my velocity is always negative. So that means my original function, my position function, has to always be falling. Because I'm always falling, I don't have the option to kind of oscillate back and forth and hit that negative 8 multiple times. So the only viable way that I can get from the point at 0 to the point at 3 is by decreasing the whole time. So I can only cross that negative 8 once on that interval. Same argument can be made here. I'm always moving to the right. I'm always increasing. And here I'll always be moving to the left or decreasing. So we can write that we get exactly three times because of the IVT and because V of T is um, or I guess I should say does not change sign on any interval. And we're done.